All right, what the fuck is going on, everybody? Sorry, it's going in my house. Oh, I'm going in my house. Went down the stairs. Oh, uh, one of the kids got a new bike. Oh, when the birthday was in March, we had to get him a new bike. Anyways, everything is beautifully opened up here in my hometown of Cornwall, Ontario, Canada. Um, I don't know how everywhere else in the world is. I can only go by the information I take in. Um, I know there's some people in Australia that says it's pretty good there. Second best place in the world to be during a lockdown. And I know other people that say it's a com complete lockdown here, folks. So between those two informations, I gather it would be somewhere in the middle. So that's kind of what I do with everything. And therefore, I believe my hometown is probably one of the best places, or sorry, my country is probably one of the best places for this lockdown. Because, I'm sorry, I'm just taking a seat. No, I'm not taking a shit. I'm just sitting on the toilet, though. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I really don't. But, Canada, Canada is one of the best places to be. And I don't know why that would be. Now, I have my theories, and I have my, my beliefs, and I have what I know. And I add those together, and I get something that is coherent enough for me to understand. And also helps my spirituality and my whatever. Whatever you want to call it, my magic. Um, is that, you know, the same thing I've been teaching and others teach. And when I say teaching, I don't mean I'm, I'm a teacher. I just mean I'm another voice saying this shit is real. And, you know, if you want to change your life, well, do what I do. And when I say do what I do, it just means read the books I read, listen to the people I tell you to listen to, and then shit will happen for you. If you want to, it doesn't, you might not jive with what I say. You might not believe the people I promote. So it is what it is. I can't do nothing about that. So, but then it's like, well, then why are you here? <laughs> but anyways, um, if we create a reality, if we make our choices, if we whatever, then what's happening right now is because of us. Now, I know I say stuff about government this and vaccines that and trying to steal your mind power and all that still stands. That doesn't mean that the whole coronavirus thing hasn't been used against you. But we still created this. And that's a hard thing to wrap your fucking mind around. It's going to take a while too to get your mind wrapped around that. It took me a while to wrap my mind around it. I probably didn't fully, fully comprehend what I comprehend now. Which probably isn't even completely comprehending the situation. But where I am now, what I understand right now about the situation. You know, it probably just happened like within the last week. By studying the brain, by studying prana even more in depth than I had before. By re-looking at all these different angles on how we become into fear mode. How we get disease. How the brain interprets these things. What happens to the human body when we're dead. How some diseases are no longer prevalent in your body when you pass away. Some are, some aren't. It's a very, you know, and I, I look at both sides of those arguments all the time to try to find some middle ground. Um, and, you know, it's just, for me, undoubtedly, we created this. Now, were we coerced and brought to this? Were we shown things to lead us ultimately here? Probably. One thing I think is important to understand, or at least think might be happening or might be real is and this is if you believe there's any elite groups out there if you don't have the belief of an elite group then then you've got to understand that this is all on us which to me whether there's an elite group or not it's still all on us it's on us to get us out of it it was on us we put ourselves in it so it doesn't matter but to me whether there's an elite group or not but let's do the elite group thing the illuminati the government the reptilians whoever the fuck you think is running this fucking bitch this world um if there's one of those then they know shit that we don't know even the most awakened motherfuckers they know more than we know they've been born and bred into this this is assuming that they're human right maybe there is some guys that are timeless and and, and are immortal that are guiding them but the ones that are human, because those people that are mortal, guiding them, can't control our reality. That's one thing I know. No outside influences can control our reality. There's outside elemental forces that do things within our reality, 
but it's our minds that activate and get those things to work. And I know that's hard to wrap your head around as well, but it just is what it is. Why is the weather never accurate? Why is sometimes the weather bang on, sometimes it's, it's totally off? Sometimes it says it's gonna rain and it's sunny out. Sometimes it's sunny and it's gonna rain out. I had a friend the other day said, um, you know what, I tried that re uh, uh, reject, banish, deny thing. Uh, whenever her, her boyfriend left the house um, to go somewhere and she's like, fuck, it's gonna fucking rain. And then obviously it started raining. And she's like, God, I wish he had a ride. And then it wasn't that long that someone picked him up off the road. Or, sorry, she said, no, uh, to the rain, she said, I reject that thought that it's not gonna, it, it, reject the thought that it's gonna rain. And anyway, something to that effect. I don't remember, she told me this about a couple weeks ago. And sure enough, somebody picked him up, person he hasn't seen in years, you know? So, you know, I've done that too before. I have it on my channel where I was cutting down, um, I was trimming, not cutting down, I was trimming my tree and it started to rain. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta finish the rain. And I said, no, I reject that, banish that fucking thought. And I accept the thought that it's gonna cut, the sun's gonna come out. And it was within five minutes, it changed. Now, was that already in the cards? Probably, maybe. Maybe it was already in the cards, but was that already in the cards because the cards already knew that I was going to say that? Maybe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If what you say and do changes your reality, then you can say, well, that was already going to happen and you just said it. Sure. But whether it's, it was already going to happen and then you said it or you said it and then it happened, it's the same fucking outcome. That's why I say there's nothing to fucking worry about because whatever outcome we're gonna have is gonna be one that we're gonna choose and ultimately we're gonna deal with it. Some things are gonna be bad, some things are gonna be good. Everything is made up of both those and the only constant is change. Therefore, that's the only thing you can bank on. So our situation right now is gonna get worse and it's gonna get better, it's gonna get worse, it's gonna get better and ultimately we're just gonna keep going back and forth because everybody is positive and negative. And what I mean by that is not only is it both your body is positive and negative, but I mean there's people out there that are being positive and there's people out there being negative. And I mean that as in positivity and negativity, not as in ions or electricity or energy. But there's that too. <laughs> But I mean, there's people out there that want the world to end because they're Christian or whatever, Jude Jewish, and they want the fucking world to end so they can be like, ha ha, fuck you guys. I told you you were going to die. I told you you were going to go to hell. I told you Jesus was coming. And here he is, or not Jesus, well, not for the Judaism. They're going to believe that God, the Messiah, comes at the end of the world as well. And he only comes once versus Christianity. He comes, he came twice. They just roll with the punches. Like, no, no, no. He came the first time, but the next time is going to be the time the Jews talked about. But this time was true too. <laughs> okay. But anyways, point is, there's a lot of people out there that want the world to end. Or whenever things get negative, most people resort to a negative state when bad things happen. That's human nature most of the time, nine, nine, nine times out of ten. And then it's... It can be a beneficial practice if you do it right. If you do like, a, I think it's either negative brainstorming or negative meditation. It's a stoic practice that I learned a while back, um, stoicism or whatever. But basically when you wake up in the morning, you think about all the ways your, your day can suck or go wrong. And then you meditate on all the ways you can, how that can happen and then how you can fix it. So that if those things happen throughout your day, you already know the resolutions. So. The only thing I say when doing this is don't put any emotion into that. And, you know, if those situations start arising, you reject, banish, and deny the thoughts of that happening throughout your day as well, is what I add to that. Because there's always this, you know, link to your thoughts and to bring things into manifestation. So if you say, hey, how's everything going to suck today? And then your subconscious starts shooting ideas at you that what may come, you know, I'd say best to banish those. And this is what's going to happen instead. So I've tweaked that, that, um, that practice a little bit. But nonetheless, this is just all to say that people resort to a negative state more than they do positivity. Um, because their life has been like that. I mean, it's not out of fucking just... That's out of fucking life. You know what I mean? That, that's, that, they do that because that's, that's what happened in life to them. You know, there's no reason to think that this life is, I gotta go sit somewhere else. It's kind of weird to sit in the bathroom, but it's the only door that locks in my house right now. Actually, that's not true. My bedroom does, but only from the outside. It's a weird thing, but, um, yeah, yeah. I love the Bomir shit. Anyways, um, so 
all that's to say that, you know, most people go to a negative state because all they see was negativity. No, I didn't shit. I just pissed when I was sitting down like a girl. I'm sorry, guys. Hmm. I don't care, though. Ralph Smart said to own your weirdness and own your uniqueness and own a bunch of different things that I can't remember, but it was a great fucking... I really liked his episode today or his show or his uh, his video, I guess. It was really good and, uh, you know, helped me to try to remember to not care so much what people think and if I become a dick to not care so much unless, you know, if you're being insensitive and aren't racist and shit like that, that's wrong. But if you're not, if you're just pointing out stuff, then maybe it's not so bad, but... You know, fuck it. Who gives a fuck? But anyways. Whew. So people resort to negativity because they've only had negative experiences or mostly negative experiences. And most of the time in their life, they wanted something. They wanted to achieve something. They wanted to win an award. They wanted to win something. And then lo and behold, they said, no, you're never going to win. You're never going to win. In the background of their mind all the time. But then when the time came, they really hoped they were going to win. And what do you know? They didn't win. But there are some people that really thought they were going to win and said, no, I'm going to win. They kept saying, no, I'm going to win. No, I'm going to win. Maybe the parents reinforced it because they had good parents and then they fucking won. You know, that's happened to me. That happens to me now a lot. I can do magic every day, which is the reject, banish, deny thing and accepting what I want to happen. You reject something away. It's going to go away for a time, but it's going to come back unless you place something else in there. When you reject you got to accept when you, but in all honesty, just reject, banish, deny is the first step. If you're doing that, then pat yourself on the back. That's awesome. And you're going to see results soon. The reason I've been going on and on about breath and sympathetic versus parasympathetic and all that is because this happens immediately. The changes when you start breathing through your nose deeply in and out, you can start getting the effects immediately. You start healing your body immediately. You become, you stop being in fear immediately. It happens instantaneously. Well, within minutes, but you know what I mean? It's not like rejecting. If I reject a thought in the morning, by the end of the day, I can see the thing I accept starting to play out. If it's a big grand scheme thing, that's going to play out, you know, uh, over time. And you're going to see things adding up to make that manifestation come into effect. But there are some things that, you know, I reject that it's going to fucking rain. And it's going to be sunny. And it's going to be a beautiful sky that I can uh, take pictures of when the sun's setting. And lo and behold, it happens. Versus, you know, uh, there's going to be chemtrails in the sky and I won't be able to see it. And once again, I don't know if chemtrails are a real thing or not. I do know that they awfully a lot make these big clouds with the fucking whatever exhausts coming out of that fucking thing that was retrofitted on a plane is that chemicals probably i've always i've seen the patents and all the things like that for that i've seen the other side of the argument where contrails and i know what contrails are because when i grew up as a kid i used to look at the contrails but they didn't turn into clouds and that's just first-hand knowledge but once again i don't believe it's because they are poisoning us via the air and fluoride and all that which is happening probably as well but i believe it's for something bigger it's to hide something that we don't want us to know so that's why they allow people to talk about how they're poisoning the water and the land and the air and all this shit. and i've already talked about how the pentagram you know uh spirit uh air fire water and earth are the five elements and we need all five to be in balance so if your spirituality is attacked which it is because there's fake spiritualities on both sides all right, the only real spirituality is within you. You have to pull it out of you. You can look to older uh, methods to help pull your spirituality out of you. But ultimately, I believe your spirituality is within you that you need to grab out of you. Because even if you become uh, a witch, a ceremonial magician, um, a shaman, since I've been talking about the wizard so much, um, all these different things. You can still follow those traditions. There's nothing wrong with following those traditions. Hell, I do the ceremonial magic and the witchcraft thing more than anything. But I also looked into a lot of different things, um, including a lot of the different rune, um, uh, Norse, um, Vedic. I love Vedic astrology. I, I think Vedic astrology, I don't want to say it's more right than the traditional one that I, 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 I talk about more. But I find... Because they only do the seven planets, and I like that. Because I like the seven. I, I like concentrating on the seven more than the last three. But I believe the last three have an influence. And I think the last three could be part of this influence happening today. Because for my generation, planet fucking Pluto is in Scorpio for everybody born in my generation. 
all right? And Scorpio is on my descendant line. Scorpio is my descendant. Taurus is my ascendant, okay? So ascendant is my conscious mind. Descendant is my subconscious mind. So I portray that I'm a Taurus with this fucking glasses and the hair done, right? And the chain and the fucking brand names. That's a Taurus, right? I'm materialistic. But inside my subconscious mind, what I really probably am or what the other part of me is, is more of the Scorpio, the fucking addicted to fucking occult shit all day long. I can get lost in there and I have been lost in the occult and healing and shit like that because I do do healing magic. I've healed my wife. I've healed my dog. I've healed myself. I've healed my children. I've healed many fucking things, but it's something I can't control completely either. I'm not going to come out here and start teaching healing magic. That's why when I started, I said this is healing magic when it comes to the brain and the prana. It's because if you're not breathing right, if you're not drinking the right shit, if you're not moving your body in the right way, and if you're not, if you don't have the right, if your desires and what you love is all mangled and you don't know what that is and you are impulsive and that's swaying what you love and if your spirituality, if you're not trying to get in touch with that, well, then you're not in balance. Those are the five. That's the pentagram, okay? The love thing is the Venus thing. It's uh, if your desires and love and all that is all skewed, well, then you're not, you're not going to be, you, you don't have what you love. What is the thing that you love to do to just do? What is it? When passion is related to that, but that's Mars. But those two things are connected. It's gender, right? It's fire and earth. It's male and fucking female. Okay? To me, that's not necessarily polarity, that's gender. But they coexist together perfectly. They, they connect. We all know that, right? So that's why your passion and what you love, you put those two things together and you lose all track of time and you can get lost in it, whatever that is. But then there's the other polarity of air and water, which is... Um, air is how we breathe, prana, and it's also linked to your spirituality, but I think that there's, there's its own point of the star, but how you breathe, your thoughts, um, all that is also attacked just like the water you drink, and your emotional balance is also attacked. Okay, so that's why I say they're attacking all points of the pentagram to get us to stay out of balance, and so we never figure out what's real. This way, whenever they mix in some real knowledge with all their bullshit, you throw the baby out with the bathwater because they don't know what they're talking about. And then people that do know what they're talking about also get pushed to that same side. And that's the point. And that's what we got to stop and prevent. And that's why we need the numbers on our side. That's why we need more people sharing. We need more people sharing. We need more gurus and people to teach and, you know, pay to get paid to teach. There's nothing wrong with being paid to teach. But we also need just the regular Joes coming out here and saying this shit is real. This is what I've done and you can do the same thing. And maybe what I did can help you out. And by helping you, I'm going to help myself. And that's what I do. And I am very meticulous, meticulous when it comes to my spirituality and very protective over it. I protect the shit out of myself and my family because of this stuff. Because I know the wide variations of it from you don't need a circle when you do ritual to if you don't have a circle, a demon can get you and fuck your life right up kind of thing. There's a big polarity scheme there within the same community. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the stupidity. That's trying to fuck you over and hurt you so you go run to Jesus or whatever fucking fake fucking Mohammed motherfucker you want to fucking believe in and I don't have a problem with anybody believing in that as well as doing their own spirituality that's fine you can find occult knowledge in anything even the fucking bible even fairy tales even everything it's in everything but your mind has to be in a certain place and you can't be listening to others to tell you what they think it is you can listen to their opinion and sometimes it'll help you either say no that's not right or no that makes sense what if i add this to that and then you come up with your own idea we are all fucking different why the fuck would we have the same religion the same spirituality it doesn't make sense no two people have the same astrology chart no two people have the same anything dna why should we have the same religion why should we be under the same teacher why should any of us have the same anything we need to all learn from each other because some of us are similar 
and things will work for us. And we are definitely influenced by other people. And we always want to do what somebody else higher than us. Even the leaders follow somebody to become that leader. So I guess I'm saying all this because I, I, we need help. And my hometown is awesome. Everybody's outside. You couldn't even tell there's a pandemic. And well, until you go to a store and you see the lineup and you see three people out of 20 with a mask on. And I love it. Fucking love it. I don't think you need that fucking mask. Show your beautiful smile. You don't need a fucking mask. It's not going to protect you anyways. If someone has COVID and they spit on that fucking mask at some point, you are either going to put that near another family member and they're going to get it. And or it's going to go through like the fucking fibers in a condom that couldn't protect you from AIDS. The AIDS virus is smaller than the fibers in a condom and you can't see that. It's microscopic. That's what we're told. There's a lot of things that we can't see that are real, but we try not to believe in. But there's other things that we can't see that are just as ludicrous that we do believe in. And we use the stupidity of the one to say that's bullshit, yet you go and pray to some man in the sky that's never been proven either. All right, so before I keep going on uh, whatever the fuck I was just going on, fuck, my glasses are always crooked. I find it looks fucking funny. My one ear must be lower than my other ear or something. I don't get it. But anyways, um, um, so what I said about the outside forces that can't fuck with us, okay? Now, that doesn't mean, because I can't tell you for sure what thoughts are. I can tell you what I speculate, what I assume. I can tell you how to not let them affect you. And easier said than done. If you get a thought about like, oh, you're never going to fucking win on this bingo ticket. You know, depending on how you, how your emotional ties are to your money situation. If you're, you know, in, in a bad way right now, you know, you might probably won't even buy the ticket if you were smart. But, you know, it's going to be harder for you to disassociate any emotion with, you know, to be able to do the banish, banish reject, deny. But also at a certain point, if things are so bad, you got to be like, well, there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. Everything can just go up from here. So why don't I just give it a shot? But anyways, so when I say that there's nothing, in the, if there is any forces, any beings, any dark fucking sinister shadow spirit demon motherfuckers that are actually whispering shit in our ear, just like there's good ones also whispering in our ear. You just got to get in touch with the right one. And you can say, well, you'd be in the right vibration or whatever the case is. You got to be in a good place in your life. You got to be in a good place in your mind. You got to be in a nice place. Now, can you be angry and upset and passionate in the darker sense and get good thoughts? I'll let you know next time I'm in that place and I'll see if I can channel some. And that's the issue. If you are the if you could a, a ability to, to kind of be in the right state of mind to think about, oh, I had no, I'm supposed to do this last time. I was all this pissed off. But it's not what happens when you're pissed off. You're overwhelmed by the whatever thing pissed you off and then everything that's ever happened to you sometimes comes up or everything that person's ever done to you that gave you the same emotion comes up and you're just overwhelmed you couldn't fucking do anything right if you're really good at the fucking playing a sport or fucking playing an instrument you try to play it whenever you're in a state like that and it's gonna be very hard and once again you might not even get that those thoughts because your thoughts are aligned with every other thought that you ever had or every other thought or spirit or thought form that's around you right now that is on that same emotional level you know you can look at it as down and up or side to side and you know the left side is all the way low and the right side is already high or the highest point is the lowest and the lowest is the highest you know what i mean it doesn't matter we associate good and bad with these things but they're not they don't automatically just good isn't always the highest and bad isn't always the lowest because if some, but we there was a bear spotted right close to my, my town, like my, I uh, forget where, in Cornwall. But there was a bear spotted. And a guy at my work, his buddy took a picture, sent it to him. He sent it to me. It was pretty fucking cool. Um, anyways, but I was going to say, put it on here, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but that's not my picture to do that with. Um, but so if a bear is going to eat you. Would the right thought in your mind be to, oh, this bear just needs love. I gotta give it a pet it. 
And then you, you, what would happen? You'd lose your fucking arm. Or you'd at least swat it away. And, you know, depending on the bear, most of them have pretty fucking long nails. Because, you know, they don't really go get a manicure anytime. They fucking just let that shit grow because, you know, their body tells it to grow. So they assume it needs to grow. Which is like our body is growing our fingernails and our hair. And we just come along and say, no, let's cut that shit. We don't need that shit. I'm not saying to grow your hair long or your fingernails long. Although that's kind of what's happening with no hairdressers. Only the bald fuckers don't have to worry. But anyways, sorry. Or a hat wearer. Um, But point is, that would be fear that would be important in that moment. You would need fear. Or would it? Because a bear is supposed supposed to play dead. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you. If you're really supposed to play dead or not, because I've never had a bear, uh, a bear attack or anything like that, and the bear will just do nothing. But most some people say you have to do a show of dominance, and so that would depend on the information. Because if if playing dead is the wrong information, and run the fuck out of there, or standing your ground and fucking growling at that bitch in the face, then you know, then the if then the fear thing might be important. But if not, then you might need to be rational about it. But either way, here's the thing, okay? This is what I'm going to say overall about that since that's a pretty unopened answer. There's times when you need fear and there's times when you need love. So anybody who's not working on depolarization, most of the time their intuition is going to be right. Well, before all this, before before maybe our time. But back in the day, if they ran into a, a bear and shit like that and they weren't, weren't, couldn't get into some depolarized state or maybe they didn't have that knowledge, maybe the books just all got burned and shit like that, so they never had any of the special knowledge anymore, then their intuition served them. Their body formed this for them. Uh, and it was a way to save the human race and so it preserved and lived on. Because let's say a woman, you know, women are so much more important than men. If they just wandered around and got eaten by bears all the time, well, the human species would be, you could have a hundred men, but when those hundred men are gone, you're done, you know, nothing else is growing. But point is, um, our body intuitively knows what to do when to do it. But today's day and age, we're overstimulated with shit. Coffee can put you in the sympathetic nervous system and start activating the fear in your body and the fight or flight. And you're supposed to go to work. But all of a sudden, no, I have an anxiety attack. I don't want to work nine to five. It's not right. And then people come along and tell you, hey, working nine to five is wrong. And it's like, fuck, it's my intuition speaking to me. No, you're just in the fucking sympathetic nervous system. I'm not saying working a nine to five is or isn't right. I'm just saying this is how the people can manipulate you. We ultimately created our circumstance. We decided to have coffee. But yet, these people come along and like, well, if they're already going to be in the sympathetic, well, then why don't we try to promote our program that teaches you how to work from home and tell them the 9 to 5 is a bad thing, and then this way we fucking, it's a win-win. And it's like, well, no, it's still not right. You don't do that to people. You don't fucking take advantage of them. But once again... Who taught you how to drink coffee? Well, you watched your parents do it. Well, they learned it from their parents. They learned from their parents. It's just something that keeps getting handed down. But eventually down the line, what came first? The deception or our choice? That's a hard thing. That's chicken and the egg. Who the fuck knows? But it keeps going. It's a cycle. It's a cycle that maybe that needs to be broken. Maybe that's what's happening right now. I don't know. I'm throwing these thoughts out there and see what everybody else thinks. And maybe other people can expand on my ideas. Um, but... Did we get deceived first or did we create it first? And that's how it works. Well, not how it works, but you know what I mean. The thought comes first. You breathe in the air. And that air is positive and negativity. Uh, refreshes your body. And then there comes the thoughts. Positive and negative. Which state are you already in? You can say, well, why don't you go in a state first? Okay, but you're just always in a state. You know what I mean? This is why you actively work at becoming depolarized. As soon as you hear someone say, hey, you should be depolarized, you do your information, you're searching on it, when you ultimately find out it's a good idea, you fucking do it. So that every day you become more, or sorry, less and less polarized, either for or against. And you're for and against on a whole range of topics. And this is how you manipulate yourself to do magic. If you need to be in a loving emotional state like you've never had before, then you need to get visualization working good so you can visualize some point in your life where you had that emotional reaction and thinking about it reliving your mind is going to make that real inside you and then you are in that state and that means you can be in that state all day long 
I mean, you're going to keep pulling on different ones. But as you do this, you manifest stuff. And then, then your emotional thought on command, I guess, would be your first manifestation. Because that's going to give you a lot of joy in your heart to know that you did this with your mind. And you are that powerful. You're not just somebody listening to these guys on the internet anymore. You're actually somebody doing it. And once you get there, you should definitely come on board and start talking about it and sharing with the fucking world. And don't just sit back and just you know hold that shit to yourself. And be like, well, I don't want to be looked at as an idiot. Well, if the person who taught you that never came on and said what he did, you would never be where you are right now. And that's something to remember. But once again, I digress on all that. What came first, the thought or the deception? Were we deceived first? Who knows? Fucking no one knows. What's Mercury? Well, he's both sides of the coin. He's the two pillars. He's black and white within one fucking sign. You know, he's, uh, that's why I say air and water are more like polarity because with Mercury is an air sign. Um, but, you know, holding the caduceus, which is snakes, which is Scorpio, which is water. You know, it's, it's, it's um he's both he's hermaphroditic he's got both genders as well he's got the air and the water he's got the fire and the earth all within him that's why i think he goes with all the the north south or not the north south well maybe there's north south maybe somebody else does that role but all between the east and the west when you combine um either earth sorry when you combine air with either fire or water or earth and when you combine water with either fire or earth I think Mercury comes into play there because he can go around. So Mercury and the moon brings on, you know, both those other aspects. He can connect everybody together all at once. And that's something I have to go in depth on on a whole other video because it's something I can't explain easily. And to get to where I got to with that, I need to really do a lot of backlogging and talking and explaining i think anyways and, and i hope no one thinks i say these things because i think i'm better than anybody and maybe it is a, t a way for me to kind of show how much i know and whatever but i i truly I, I truly am trying to help people i'm not trying to manipulate people i'm not trying to make myself above anybody i'm really not i don't think that's the point at all what goes in has to come out like i mean when you talk about how good you did in a game Sometimes it's bragging, yes, but sometimes you're trying to help. Whenever you teach somebody at school something, uh, teachers, they're teaching at school. You know, they're getting paid by the government, but the kids are going there and parents are paying by tax paying. So I guess they're technically being paid, but, you know, they're teaching because they chose that job at least and they had to pay a lot to become that teacher. And so they get the payment back for that. But I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. Here's the thing. I said this before, before, I said this a long time ago. When you're doing spiritual work, okay, if you pick a guru, a magical teacher, whoever, whoever you decide to pick and you buy their products, that's great. And I'm, there's nothing against that. I, I always wanted to buy stuff from Birch and fucking Frederick Xavier, and there's been a select few others that I like as well. Um, but I never have. Well, Birch one thing, but it wasn't like a program. It was like stuff from a shop. Um, but um, I, I never, um, for me, like I said, if I would have told my wife I needed however amount, X amount of dollars for this magical shit, she would have lost it. I hid this from her for the longest time. And you can say, well, you shouldn't have to hide who you are and all that. Well, when you're doing magic, it's part of it. You're supposed to hide what you're doing. Because when people, like the magic itself, if people know you're a magician, well, then they're going to think you're fucking crazy. And then your manifestation might not come in because how many minds out there think you're full of shit? Well, their minds create reality just like your minds do. So the more minds that know you do something that has been demonized and hated on and persecuted against for millennia, then how successful can your magic be? But... If you keep it to yourself, then it works better. But also, there's the whole, I want a divorce because you're crazy thing, you know? It took a while to get her where she is. And I think I started off too soon because we had some really rocky periods. But ultimately, she decided this was part of her husband. And she decided to have me for better or for worse. And she's ran with it. 
just like there's some aspects about her not to this extreme i mean she's probably as close as perfect as you can get but um she um there's parts of her that you know are less that lesser than desirable but at the same time that they make her who she is and i wouldn't have her any other way so she ultimately got on board and i'm fucking grateful for that and that's fucking wealth in the most purest sense yeah, you can have lots of money, and yeah, you can live off a YouTube fucking channel or a podcast or, you know, having a good life's great, but, you know, I got the good life. I got four children that love me. I got parents and a sister that love me, like, unconditionally as well. I got a wife that accepts me even for my fucking weird shit, which, you know, to me, it's not weird, but to society today, it's weird, and you can say, wow, that's just society, but it doesn't matter. Somebody who doesn't know or, you know, to accept somebody like that, that's, that's not easy. It's not an easy task. And to me, that's fucking the purest form of wealth there is. And, you know, if you're not grateful for what you already got, you're never going to get more. And it doesn't, this shit doesn't happen overnight either. I mean, it takes time for, for anything to build. So uh, if you have 7 billion minds trying to manifest something at the same time, what happens? Well, coronavirus, that's what happens. So, <laughs> well, there's a lot more people trying to manifest right now is all I mean. And, you know, that's probably what can happen. Like, People are coming in touch with this, and that's what I was kind of getting at with my my uh, my generation. You know, we have Pluto and Scorpio and all that shit, and there's a lot to be said about that. But with as many people on the planet and everybody's um, manifesting at the same time, instead of their body just manifesting for them, this is might be what happened. But anyways, be be happy for what you got. I got a baby coming upstairs. I gotta go.